Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 40. And today we're going to talk about connecting to a MySQL database and throwing errors. And the first topic of discussion is constructors and destructors. Now, we had mentioned briefly in a previous lesson that there was a constructor, and we showed the code, but we'll say we're going to ignore this and pick it up in a later lesson, and this is that later lesson. And what constructors and destructors do? They are automatically called when an object is created or destroyed. And a constructor is used to basically initiate an object before it's used or run in its method. So in the database code, it's actually used to, in a sense to establish a connection to the database right away before you start calling your method. So basically, think of the constructor as a piece of code that's run once you instantiate it. So in PHP 4, the constructor had to be the same name as the class. But that changed in PHP 5, and there's a special name for the constructor. So this changed in PHP 5, and there's a special name for the constructor, and it's function underscore underscore construct and that's how you create a constructor and that's pretty much all there is to it for example here's a class called table which has the function constructor and when it's instantiated immediately whatever is inside of that uh, piece of code is run. Now we're going to see this in the database code. Matter of fact, let's go to it right now and show you the constructor method. So we're on lesson 39 and 40 and we have our connection code right here and the first part of the code basically is a require once which brings in all the database information of the config file and we covered that last time so go back and review that video if you haven't seen that before. So once you have all the database information what we want to do is uh, in a sense create the class which is we're going to call interface service and we have a few variables a table name called sequences and a private connection and that connection is going to be actually the connection that we establish with the server. And immediately what we're going to do is run a constructor method. So what happens is when this function is basically instantiated, this method runs. So the constructor method initiates the connection to the database. So within the constructor function, you have all this cool stuff. You're going to have a this uh, connection because you're calling connection within the class. You need the, the this pseudo name. And that's going to equal to the mysqli underscore connect method. Now once again remember this is not SQL but SQL improved so we're using these new methods from PHP 5 and basically all the MySQL uh, underscore connect method does is opens a connection to the MySQL server and what we're going to do is we're actually going to establish basically in that connect a number of important variables and that's the server that we're going to use, the uh, user, the password, the name, and the port. So all those are put into the connect method and once that's done we're going to check and see if there was indeed a connection by running a custom throw exception on error method. We're going to show that to you in a moment and then I'm going to just put a little bit of an if statement in here to say hey did the connection occur and if it did just uh, print out oh yeah you are connected. Now you might think I want an else statement in there as well right? If I wasn't connected I might want to throw an error or tell me that I wasn't connected but I'm actually going to do all that through the throw exception error so now let's go ahead and take a look at the throw exception below here We actually have a throw exception method that we're going to actually use throughout the code. So as we begin to build this code, we'll be going back and forth to this throw exception method. Now, just real quick here, um, there are, throwing exceptions is very important. And the old adage is, if you throw something, you got to catch it, and that's for sure. And we're going to talk about exceptions here in a moment, but let's just discuss this code just a little bit. What happens here? It goes ahead and checks and see if the link is null or not. And if it's not, it will check that link for the connection again. Here's the heart of the code right down here is the if my SQLI error link. Now what's going to happen here, if there's an error, it's going to print out an error message for you. And it's going to print out an and it's going to print out an error no message and an error message. Now an error no message basically is an error number. And an error message is basically a text of that error number. And then it throws that exception. So let's talk about exceptions just a little bit here. You know with PHP 5 came a new object oriented way of dealing with errors. Exception handling is used to change the normal flow of code in execution. So if a specific error or exception condition occurs, the condition is called an exception. So in an exception, the current code state is saved. Uh, the code execution will switch to a predefined custom exception handler. And depending on the situation, the handler may then reuse the exception from the saved code. So what happens many times in code, you hit an error and it doesn't know what to do. And then it just kind of stops and you don't want that to happen so whenever you think there might be an error you want to put kind of a try catch situation and in the catch you want to have an exception handler where you can actually run some different code and you'll see this over and over again we'll get more into detail but I just want to cover it 
pretty quickly here. In the notes, if you I'll go ahead and print the notes that I have for the course, you can see I've got quite a bit of information on throwing and catching exceptions. So in the notes, there are several examples of throw and catch. We're just basically going to just use the throw for now because all we're doing is essentially say, is there an error? And if I haven't connected to my database, just throw it. I mean, there's no reason. Once if I if this system is not connecting to a database, then there's no reason to do anything else. Let's just throw the error, and that's it. Okay, so that's pretty much how the code works. And there's one more thing in here, and that's the method that I have in the code. It's called get all interface. And basically, I'm going to grab all the items in the database. Now, there's nothing in there right now because next time we're going to talk about SQL language. And so you're going to learn how to actually grab things from the database, update a database, uh, delete items in a database, and everything you need to know about databasing as far as the basics are concerned with the SQL language. So, with that said, let's just review quickly what we have. We have the config file, which is bringing all the database information. We've defined a sequences table and a connection parameter. We're going to bring all those uh, important parameters into the MySQLI connect statement when we run the uh, constructor method. And we're going to throw an error if we actually don't connect. And we have a method in here we can actually run, but nothing will happen right now because there's nothing in there to happen. So let's go ahead and take a look how we instantiate this. So what we're going to do is come along here and uh, just the database service we call interface service. We're going to hit a new interface service, instantiate it, and throw it into a variable my database. And then we're going to run the method in my database called get all interface, which will do nothing because there's nothing in there. But if we have a successful connection, then we should print out uh, the uh, uh, message you are connected. So let's run it and see what happens. And we get a you are connected, so it is working indeed. Let's see what happens if we don't connect. So let's go back to the code, and let's comment out uh, the database host or something like that, just so we don't get a connection. So I'll come along here and put a double comment out. Let's save that and run it now and see what happens. And when you do, you see you do get indeed a series of messages telling you, hey, you didn't connect, and that's it. Your program's not going to run. And that's what you want to happen, because you've got to connect to the database if things are going to function. So that's the error method. Everything's running correctly. And that's how easy it is to build simple connect code. Go ahead and make sure you download that code from the uh, PHP training site. And I just want to make one more uh, comment here. Since we've already gone through everything, let's just take a look one more time at our config file. So we'll go back to our config file, click on that. And here's our database right here uh, called Storyboard. But we actually had created another database. So let's take a look at that database as well and connect to that. So if I go to PHP My Admin, I'm just going to go there to get the name of the database. And you can see in PHP My Admin, we created a name called Storyboard Example. That's the actual code that we had created. Let's go ahead and go back and put that name in there. So we put Storyboard Example, and pretty much that's how easy it is to change to a whole new database. Go ahead and save that. Go back to our PHP code. Let's comment that back out so we can actually connect to that database. And we'll make sure we'll run it. And there you see you are connected. So you actually just switched to a different database. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? And that's pretty much all there is to connecting to a database. Let's just review the code real quickly. We've got a config file that we bring in. We, we created some variables, specifically a sequences and a connection variable. And then we ran a constructor method that runs upon instantiation of the code using the mysqli connect command. And we brought in several variables that we used to connect to that database. And we have a throw method that throws the error if it doesn't connect. And a, a method that we're going to start filling out uh, in a upcoming lesson so we can actually talk to this database and start adding data, removing data, and manipulating data. And at the end of the code is our exception method with the uh, error no and error uh, links and then we instantiated our code and ran it. So that's pretty much all there is connecting to a database. The code is right here. We're going to start, we're going to start building this code up in the future but next we're going to learn all the SQL commands for manipulating data in a database. So thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. I'll see you next time.